Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Top Tips for a Successful RPA Implementation. My name is Claire Cox. I'm the Field Marketing Manager at Mastec, and we're an organization that operates in the UK, America, and India, offering enterprise-level digital transformation services. So before we get started, I'd just like to show you around your webinar console and take you through the widgets that you can see at the bottom of your screen so that we can make this webinar as interactive as possible. So from left to right, you have the help widget in case you're experiencing any technical difficulties, the slides and the media player, which I recommend that you keep open throughout the webinar. There's a Q&A widget, so if you have any questions, pop them in the question box and we'll take as many as we can at the end. Then you can find the resource list where you can download the slides from today's webinar. We have a survey, which I hope you'll spend just a minute filling out at the end, just so that we can find out if there's anything that we've missed out that you would like to know about and anything else that you're interested in hearing about in our webinar series. There's a contact us widget. If you'd like to send Keith an email, you can get in touch with him directly through that widget. And finally, if you enjoy today's webinar, this last widget allows you to share this webinar with a colleague. So let me introduce you to your presenter for today's webinar. Keith Morley is one of our senior architects at Mastec. So thank you for taking the time to do this today, Keith. I will just say Keith's done another RPA webinar for us called Taming the Bot. So if you're interested in watching that one as well, just pop onto mastec.com, have a look under the resources section. You'll find all sorts on, uh, under there from white papers, case studies to other webinars that we've done. And you can find Keith's other RPA webinar there. So without further ado, over to you, Keith. Hi everyone and welcome to this seminar on top tips for a successful RPA implementation. First things first, I'd just like to introduce myself. I'm Keith Morley and I've done nearly 35 years in the computer industry. I'm currently the Senior Technical Architect at Mastec and I was CTO of NDL Software, which was founded way back in 1981 and I started there way back in 1988. I've developed, managed, architected many products within that time and I've been responsible for the development of an RPA toolkit even before RPA was invented. I've helped the NHS and local government create RPA solutions for the last 10 years. I really would just like to understand what benefits you believe you will bring, RPA will bring to your organisation. And so I'd like to just give you a little questionnaire that I'd love you to fill in. So here's the questionnaire. So this is it. What benefits do you believe RPA will bring to your organization? Improve quality and reduce errors? Increase capacity without increasing a headcount? Reallocate employees to high value tasks? Cut costs or streamline and simplify processes? Okay, if you fill in any of the questions apply to you and then just click the submit what i will do i'll give you 10 seconds and then hopefully we'll move down to the poll results so if you could please answer now and then we'll move on okay so Hopefully you should have filled them in. So let's move on to the actual question to respond to that. Very interesting. Improve quality and reduce any errors, 100%. Yeah, uh, cut cost, 25%. Yeah, extremely interesting. It's uh, very interesting to know. Okay. So let's move on to my first slide. Okay. So in March of this year, Gartner sent out these questions relating to implementing RPA to their peer review community. What piece of advice would you give prospective customers? And if you could start over, what would your organization do differently? They reviewed nearly 600 responses, mostly from experienced technical experts, 
and created a lessons learned document. In this webinar, I'd like to go through these lessons and provide some tips to assist when implementing your RPA solution. So let's move on. Okay, so these are the lessons learned. Prioritize due diligence, capitalize on vendor and third party support, formalize training and staffing, do not neglect the planning proof of concept and testing phases, and prioritize and invest in deployment and implementation. There's not really anything unusual here, and they really do tie in with my experience over the last 10 years. So let's drill down into these and see some of the strategies we can use to help you with these lessons learned. So this is the first one. Prioritize due diligence. First one, RPA is not for everything. Plan your exit strategy before setting up an RPA roadmap. Uh, it's quite apt is this one. RPA is not a panacea for all process ills and shouldn't be relied upon as a substitute for a well-designed enterprise software architecture. It's also likely you'll be automating legacy applications. So think carefully about how you migrate your processes when those applications reach end of life, and they will. <clears throat> the next two, before you choose, take all the time you need to study your business and your business processes in order to find the right vendor. Once you've decided, go all in. Due diligence is required before jumping into automating a process. Validate whether the process is stable. Lean on the existing process to remove non-value added activities and bring standardization. Then evaluate whether to automate the process through GUI-based automation or if it can be done through back-end automation. And finally, ask whether the process is feasible for RPA. For those who are familiar with standard development practices, the other two are not really new. <clears throat> However, it is easy to fall into the trap of believing the hype that RPA is simple, and you simply drag, drop, point and click. It can be simple, but it's unlikely. Your processes may be inefficient and need rewriting, and any manual error handling will have to be fully automated. You need to be really careful and ensure that all errors are handled. Okay. So let's sum look at some of the strategies to assist in due diligence. Okay, so this is the first one. Prepare, engage, and evaluate. Prepare. So you really need to identify your opportunities and business needs. What does the business actually want to achieve? And then identify the RPA tools and partners that are available and will fit your requirements. Engage. Define your strategy and align it with the rest of your enterprise, but remember to bring your workforce on board. It's really important. They will be scared. They will be worried about losing their jobs. So you need to make sure that they understand exactly what you're going to provide. And also look to see if there are any solutions in your enterprise that actually match your business needs. Is there something out there that will actually handle the solution that you need? Do you really need RPA for that? Evaluate. Analyze your business processes. Ensure they match your business needs, and you may need to change those that don't. But before you start your manual analysis, look at process mining tools. These can assist you in automatically identifying your processes. And I'll cover these in a bit more detail in the next slide. Once you have a list of processes, categorize and prioritize them. Processes that are easiest to automate follow these characteristics. Repetitive, high volume, stable, standardized, mature, and rule-based. So organize those, the ones that fit all these uh, characteristics are the ones that are easiest to automate. So once you've prioritized your processes, look at the available RPA tools. <clears throat> Check they are the best for your process. Don't forget to use all the vendor and third party support to ensure you fully understand the tools. 
and their capabilities. Okay, so let's dive a little deeper and talk further on automating your process analysis. Okay, analyzing processes involved is often quite difficult due to limited access to application subject matter experts. And even then, they may not know all the little foibles of the process, the bottlenecks, inefficiencies, and little fixes for edge conditions that have caused problems in the past. And quite often, you'll find documentation is simply out of date. So there is a really useful method, something called process mining. Process mining generally involves analyzing application event and transaction data to generate a process model. This not only documents the process, but provides rapid visualization, enable the identification of bottlenecks and other areas ripe for automation or process optimization. But it depends on your application on how successful process mining might be. Some are more intrusive than others, and you should assess which tool best fits your need. There are several tools available, such as Silonis, which is actually integrated with UiPath. And if you need further assistance, we at Mastic can actually provide a bespoke process mining service. Okay, so let's look at selecting a vendor. Okay. The big three. UiPath, Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism, all provide similar functionality in terms of capabilities, scalability, integrations, customization, and ease of use. And these are really important. And you can see here that they're all very similar. This is research from Gartner. However, each have their own nuances. And I've outlined some features here that really should be considered when making your decision. User guides and training. Each RPA tool is different with different user interfaces, recording techniques and scripting languages requiring propriety knowledge. Not only that, but developing an RPA solution has its own techniques and challenges. So you'll need to evaluate their learning ecosystems to determine their effectiveness. Cost. With functionality being similar, it will often come down to cost. How will you be charged? How much will support be? And how long will it take to develop the solution? Support. How will the vendor provide support? Do you have to pay for vendor experts based on site? Code reusability and structure. Can you create reusable objects and design well-architected code? based on standard design patterns and principles, such as layering and separations of concerns. User interactivity. You may need to actually prompt the user to validate data or for authorization. So how easy is it to integrate user actions and notifications into the solutions? And this little thing called follow me recording. <clears throat> UiPath and automation anywhere allow you to actually record the process and then generate code which you can then modify later it's interesting that blue prism are completely against this they suggest it leads to poorly structured code however it's not necessarily the case recording tools can produce well structured code if used correctly and designed properly but look at the different vendors recording functionality and choose which best fits your processes, but also your skill sets, the skill sets of your guys. Unstructured data. <clears throat> this is tricky. Unstructured data such as graphical screen interfaces from Citrix and VMware or document data from PDFs is often difficult for an automatic tool to understand using optical character recognition which has its limitations. So analyze the data used in your processes and verify how effective the vendor is at processing unstructured data. UiPath, for example, are adding AI computer vision to add machine learning, fuzzy matching, and multi-anchoring to assist standard OCR. 
support for AI. AI is the big thing these days. <clears throat> and standard RPA without AI allows for automation of existing processes. But adding AI, often known as intelligent RPA, expands this, providing real scope for business transformation and is really the next step in the RPA journey. All three provide support for cognitive analysis of unstructured data to allow you to understand the content. UiPath have teamed up with Celeton, Blue Prison with Expert System, and AI, AA have their IQ bot, and all allow access to third-party AI platforms from Microsoft, etc., to assist in designing AI algorithms using, using machine learning to actually aid with complex decision-making. You can take the decision-making from your users and put it into your RPA systems. A huge step forward and a real game changer for new business processes. Look at pre-built bots. Find out what the vendors provide out of the box. Automation Anywhere have a really cool bot store of standard and cognitive bots with specific personas such as accounts payable clerk. Really quite interesting and a, a very interesting way forward. There are many other vendors out there, but these are the big three in terms of market share. It's not a straightforward choice. And as always, if you need help, contact us. We'll only be too willing to help you choose. So I believe covered due diligence. What's next? Capitalize on vendor and third party support. So this is one of the responses. Choose a vendor with off-the-shelf processes relevant to your industry that also offers smart automation capabilities. Do thorough integration testing and then choose a third-party consultant with proper experience on the product. Choose a partner with proven functional technical experience. But remember that third-party support can actually remove single vendor tie-in. They will understand all the different RPA vendors and how to use it in your solution. Choose a vendor with off-the-shelf processes that is relevant to your industry, but remember to create a solid plan. Don't forget to use your partners closely. They understand how to actually do the RPA and how to plan for your projects. They also understand how you can get a best return on your investment. So use them if you can. Okay, next lesson. Formalize training and staffing. So really what you need to do is ensure you have a training strategy in place. Make sure it's agreed with the rest of the enterprise and do it before you start any development. Understand the product. There are some excellent training materials provided by the RPA vendors, but remember, you still need to use solid development practices and ensure that the solution fits with your software enterprise strategy. So it's important to analyze your team's capabilities and really understand their limitations. Use your partners to fill any skills gaps and also assist in training. So I think I've covered lessons for the initial foundation phase. So let's move on to the development phase. And this is important. Do not neglect the planning, proof of concept and testing phase. It's really crucial, especially if you're unfamiliar with RPA. Planning, as always, is vital. But ensure you consider the full life cycle right through to deployment and support. Remember to plan your developments carefully. Start with the least complex and build on your knowledge as you go. And there is a nice simple to remember process <clears throat> which helps you do this called the proof of value approach. Basically, you should always prove the value of the solution by fully testing with either a proof of concept or pilot before you scale into production. RPA really does have a habit of throwing up issues that you just cannot anticipate till you begin testing. 
And remember, I'm sure you're all aware, testing always takes longer than expected. And the next and final lesson covers the final phases of deployment and support. Prioritize and invest in deployment and implementation. Deployment and support is often ignored until the project is well underway, but it shouldn't be. Engage early. It's tempting to go for a big band deployment, but start small, test, build your knowledge and ensure everyone is comfortable before you scale. Almost everyone will be involved, so you need to build your governance triangle and define your interactions with other business areas. As this response suggests, create RPA centers of excellence that contain people with diverse skill sets, providing a centralized RPA talent pool to drive your LPA solutions forward and provide governance, technical expertise, management of cultural change, deployment and support throughout your enterprise. So I'd just like to dive a bit deeper into centers of excellence. So these are the center of excellence models. How do you choose one or more centers? For large organizations, it's important to define how to fit center of excellence into your organization. There are basically three models, centralized, hybrid, or hub and spoke, and federated, each with their pros and cons. Looking from left to right, you see a decrease in standardization, but an increase in agility and local knowledge and expertise. It depends on your organization as to which is best, but decide on your priorities and see which is the best fit. So what functionality should a center of excellence have? Sorry about that, I'll just move back. Center of excellence functionality. So there are seven functions, process management, technology management, bot implementation, cultural change management, knowledge management, resource management, and of course, governance. Governance needs to be strong, yet light. I could go through the others, but I do, I'm afraid I am running out of time. So I'll just skip through to the next slide. So these are the team roles that may be typically within your team. The RPA project manager, the RPA service support, RPA supervisor, RPA business analyst, change manager, of course, the developers, and a solution architect, extremely important to ensure that it's designed and architected well, but not forgetting the role of infrastructure engineer, somebody to help integrate, support, implement and deploy your solutions. So that's it. Those are my top tips. Hope people are still awake and not sent everybody to sleep. Thanks very much for listening. I do hope this webinar been of use. If there are any questions you'd like to raise, Claire will ensure that you can raise those questions. There are slides available in the resource section and there is a contact us if you'd like to contact us for any further information on this. Thank you very much for listening and I'll pass you over now to Claire. Thanks, Keith. Let me just have a look at the question box here and see what's coming in. We've already got a couple, so let me pick one of these out. Um, RPA uses the user interface, but what happens when it changes? Yeah, that's a very good question. Quite often, the user interface will change. So you need to have a plan in place to handle updates on your target applications. And to help minimize the impact, design your solution to have a structured layered architecture with reusable code to allow for minimum rewrites. If the front end changes, only rewrite the code that affects that front end. Move your business processes away from your analysis of the screens themselves. But ensure that the solution is reading the correct data Identify the UI controls as uniquely as possible. Use things like page text, label text, and control identifiers. Don't use locations such as row and column. But remember to validate the data retrieved and issue an error if required. 
and make sure the messages are really meaningful in order to identify the change as quickly as possible. So really, the screens will change. There will be updates to the UI. So you do make sure that you plan for it. That's it from me for that one. Great stuff. I think we've got time for one more because it's coming up to 11 o'clock. So here's one. Um, what are the benefits of using AI with RPA? Ah, OK. Basically, it's really useful to simplify the analysis of unstructured data. It provides the ability to analyze and understand graphical data, non-text, such as from Citrix and VMware. It's really difficult to understand and using machine learning to understand this, use the tools that are provided, use the services provided by Microsoft and other people. <clears throat> But also, it's handy to optimize and simplify processes by assisting in decision making. Quite often, the decision making is fuzzy. So passing it off to language support uh, with AI and machine learning is extremely useful. Good stuff. Anything and else? I think that's what, uh, about all we've got time for. Um, unless you wanted to talk about the... Um, the centers of excellence, building a center of excellence. You've got a couple more minutes. If there's anything that else that you wanted to say about that, Keith, otherwise people can use the contact us function there and they can send you an email about this separately. Okay. I'll just move back to center of excellence functions and just explain those in a bit more detail. So process management. Let's, uh, let's have a look at that. So this is really process selection alignment and prioritization of your processes, technology management, define the architecture, framework and tools, implementation. So this is the, this is the actual bot development, the deployment and the support. Cultural change management, this is useful because you need people to handle the cultural change and engage with your workforce to try and agree the optimal bot to human ratio knowledge management, sharing knowledge, learning and best practices across your enterprise. This is, this is really key to ensure that the entire enterprise understands what you're doing with RPA and how RPA can help. Resource management, managing a centralized skilled and trained resource pool, but optimizing the utilization of those resources throughout the organization. And of course, governance, as I mentioned, it needs to be strong, but with a light touch. Uh, so Fantastic. Have gone through that. Yeah, I think that takes us up to 11 o'clock. I will just uh, confirm again, um, you can see in the resources section there, you can get a copy of the slides. You can contact Keith Direct using that contact us widget. And if anybody there is wondering whether RPA is right for their organization, do get in touch with us. We have a range of things that we can offer to help you work out whether RPA is going to be right for you. So I think that's about all from Keith and I today. So I just want to say thank you to you, Keith. Thank you. And thank you to you all for joining us. I'm going to end the webcast now. Have a great day.